Hey everyone, it's the Grumpy Meeple, and I am back again with another one of my classic Grumpy Rants. This time, we're going to be talking about the top three awesome things about Zombicide, Undead, or Alive. So, if you've been paying attention to the channel, you will have seen yesterday that I posted my video on the top three annoying things about the campaign. And, you know, just to be clear, those all still stand. I feel like they're, from my perspective, totally valid. And, and I'm not trying to walk those back or apologize for them or whatever. But that doesn't mean that there weren't things that are cool about this campaign. Just because there are things that are less than ideal doesn't negate the cool things that are available. And so today we're going to talk about the three things that I really liked about the campaign. So the first thing we're going to talk about, the first in my list of top three awesome things about Undead or Alive, is this very special abomination, the great trickster spirit. So, here we go, here he is. And you can see even just in the image, you can see this is a really unique abomination. I, to my knowledge, I can't think of any other A-bomb that has kind of modular parts. Because what's going on here is he has three different heads that you can change out. And they, it's like phases of the battle with him. And and so this is just a really awesome, unique, thematic idea that I just couldn't be happier with, basically. So let's take a look at what you're getting here. So basically, you've got the great trickster, and they give you kind of its backstory says, you know, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but they do talk about ancient spirits wreaking chaos wherever they go. Most of us simply flee these wild gods on the spot, and yet some resist to doing whatever it takes to get them back where they belong. And so, the, you know, one, one of the things that's awesome about this is just the sculpt. It's a very cool, very dynamic sculpt. And it's huge, too. It looks like it's huge if we come down and look at the image of it next to a survivor. You know, it's a big miniature. And this idea of the multiple heads is just such a cool, unique, awesome thing that I really hope they lean into. Um, if they've found a means of push fitting these pieces together that they're happy with and that is kind of, you know, stable, then I say run with it. They could do all sorts of cool stuff with not just A-bombs, but really any, you know, miniature, even survivors, you know, something that probably wouldn't work in Zomicide, but something that another one of my favorite campaigns of the last few years did, a game called Oathsworn, is they have these this armory pack where each character actually has a sculpt of arms or hands or whatever for all of the weapons that are available to them. And so when you get a new sword, you don't just get a new sword on a card, you pick your miniature up, take his arm off, and put the arm that has that sword on. Such a cool idea. This is kind of in the same vein, and I think it's a great, I think it's a great idea. And then mechanically, it's so interesting because they get into it here. They say the gigantic great trickster is a unique, unique A-bomb that cycles through different forms as survivors battle it on the board. You have to defeat each of its forms while still managing the hordes on the board. So you've got the kind of coyote head, the raven head there, and then there's the hare. So 
looks like they go into the kind of phases of the fight. The Raven. The great trickster spirit first begins its descent in its raven form. When it spawns, all survivors are thrown into a flurry. Survivors and companions swap their positions on the board with the next survivor in turn order. Survivor needs a weapon that deals two damage in order to defeat him. So that's interesting. You only need a two, we two damage weapon to beat this particular form. The second form is the coyote. It says, next, the coyote takes center stage. While it's in play, none of the zombies on the board provide adrenaline points when defeated. The survivor needs to inflict three damage in order to defeat him. So this is really interesting. If you just let this guy wander around, he's soaking all of the experience slash adrenaline, as they refer to it, that you're getting from killing other zombies. That's a really cool idea, and... and I don't know that it's something that they've explored before. And then finally you have the hare. In its last form, the great trickster takes the shape of a hare. He is considered a moving spawn zone, bringing forth more and more zombies. Only dynamite can defeat the great trickster for good. This is another really cool idea where all of a sudden you can see it gets increasingly harder to kill each form. And each form is just more and more kind of messing with you and the game rules to the point where this form of him is moving around the map, spawning, and you're drawing a spawn card for him every round. Just a crazy idea. And then you've got here, again, the scale picture showing the spirit versus a survivor. So couldn't be happier with this. It's a really cool idea. I wish they had done more with this idea of kind of modularity in this campaign. But at the very least, I hope that they, I hope that it works out well and that they explore this in the future. So that's the first thing that I thought was really awesome from this campaign. The second thing that I thought was really awesome was the gears and guns expansion for Zombicide Undead or Alive. So here we've got kind of the backstory. The invention of this steam engine was key to the exploration of the Wild West. Even as the zombie plague broke out, using a locomotive to smash through the hordes proved very effective. But the survivors' ingenuity wouldn't stop there. Soon they began to harness the steam power to invent more dangerous wonders of their own. So this takes place, it kind of sounds like in a, like a future state. It says it's time to look in the future and time to introduce Zombicide, Gears, and Guns. So what does this come with? So first of all, the contents of the, the box in terms of miniatures and such is okay. Um, it's not ideal. I would have preferred that they either include more engineers in the core box or cut half of these, all these non-engineer miniatures and add a couple of abominations to it or something like that. But th these are much cooler sculpts, I think, than are in the core set. If you look at this, this is a very dynamic pose. <laughs> this guy, obviously, with the chainsaw. You're starting to see a little more differentiation in some of these poses. He's kind of leaning back. He's kind of leaning forward, it looks like. Another really cool dynamic pose here. So the sculpts look like a step up from the kind of endless wave of dudes with legs spread standing with weapon held up, down, or pointed out. So getting a little more dynamic in something like this where she's kind of bending over, bending her knee to aim. And then you get one steam monster abomination. But the thing that sold me on this and the thing that makes me the most excited for the future of Zombicide is the fact that this is a campaign expansion. So, you know, they introduced the campaign element in the Zombicide second edition expansions, Washington ZC and Fort Hendricks, where you have kind of persistent, you know, um, your character is persistent and your 
you're leveling up and moving forward and gaining new abilities and they introduce the idea of these objective cards which add a narrative element and a lot of unpredictability to the board and then they add the idea of the steam slash all out dice the steam dice do work slightly differently but um you know functionally it's pretty similar so first of all i'm just really glad that they are that this wasn't a one-off thing for them this idea of the campaign play because to be honest the value of more and more zombicide kind of one-off missions even in different themes like this is relatively limited to me i already have 50 zombicide missions that i haven't even played because they are this kind of one-off thing and it's just not what speaks to me if you watch my channel you know that what a lot of what speaks to me a lot of the games that i'm covering right now are narrative you know theme is very strong with me and and character progression is a big deal for me and so this is adding an, a pretty light element of character progression but it's still there and i'm just really happy that they're not dropping this idea of the campaigns i hope that they keep moving forward with it personally i think this should have been this system should have been built into the core box for undead or alive as just like a default improvement moving forward for the franchise because there's really no downside to including it as long as you don't mandate it so you include the same number of you know standard missions and then you include 10 campaign missions and the deck and the you know the cards and i'd even be okay with an increased price for that core box if if they leaned into this because much like well much like zombicide second edition when i get this stuff i'm not going to even look at the missions in the core set initially at least i'm going to go straight to the expansion box bust it open get everything organized and everything and play with that because stuff like the all out slash steam dice the new equipment cards the objective cards and the new mechanics that they introduce in these expansions is what interests me about zombicide right now so awesome that they're moving forward with this they do include six double-sided tiles which i want to say is more than were in the expansions for second edition i don't have them sitting in front of me but i want to say that there were only three in each of those so you get a good number of tiles especially because you know how many tiles are even in the core box bear with me here bear with me let's scroll all the way down here to see yeah there's only nine in the core box so that's a significant number of tiles being added and of course this expansion adds a whole bunch of new mechanics as well so the first thing it adds is um it's it's steampunk themed which is also very cool and it adds the engineer class survivor advanced weaponry inventions which are look like they're really cool in the sense that some of them at least actually don't take a spot in your inventory which kind of sucks because then you're putting stuff out you know laying out off of your really cool player board but it's cool that they don't take a bag space at least and then it has the whole campaign with story driven objectives etc so you could get the pledge that included this the steampunk pledge and here's a list of what it comes with you know i'm not going to go through all that it's pretty standard stuff but you've got the story driven campaign similar to washington dc and fort hendrix 10 missions form a single ongoing story that the survivors experience accumulating experience skills and equipment as they go actions and choices each mission may have dire ramifications down the line very cool you know this is a little lazy this is a little cut and paste this is the exact same board that is basically in the expansions for second edition down to like damn near half of these skills at least most of these skills are actually on that board in terms of the campaign skills that you can unlock 
most of those are actually <laughs> like just straight copied in the whole format of it and the structure of bonus actions, campaign stilts. I, I think they're phoning this stuff in a little bit and they really need to, if they want to continue to sit, you know, kind of preeminent in this industry as more and more of these truly boutique, like incredibly dense, rich board gaming experiences come out, they got to lean into this more. They need to put more effort into making these things unique for each box. Even in ZC and Fort Hendrix, I, I'd have to look, but the two, the, the each of them comes with this campaign tracker, and I want to say that they're identical, or at least virtually identical. There might be one or two abilities that are different. They really need to lean into this. They've got to put their backs into this kind of stuff instead of putting their backs into making a hundred miniatures that nobody wants, and then people make up fun, dumb, meme names for it. Like somebody said in one of my comments, "Survivor side," <laughs> you know. Uh, this is where the effort needs to go because this is gameplay. This adds true value. You're going to get this game to the table. You're going to in a, engage with it more and in a deeper way as you progress through these campaigns. And so they shouldn't all just be samey. And you shouldn't literally be able to take the board from the campaign tracker from ZC and use it in Undead or Alive. And that's basically what's going on here. You know, they change a couple of names, starts with a steam bottle instead of starts with a repair kit, but it's the same thing. But I'm still super happy that they're moving forward with this, just to be clear. They add the objective cards. Each mission features a unique set of objective cards, which are laid across the map. When you take it, you flip it over to uncover its contents. This is a really cool idea. I love the way that these blend into the environment, although I don't know if that will be the case as much with this kind of weird border here. I don't, the borders in, on the cards in, in ZC at least are, they're, it's themed so that the card fits like right onto the map and looks like it's part of the map essentially. So I'd love to see them chop this stupid border off, although I guess that's the back no, yeah, that's the side of the card that would be sitting on the map, so. But still, this is a really cool idea. I've seen some really cool stuff happen in my campaign, which I intend to continue very soon, of Washington, ZC. And, and so I'm very happy that they are including this. Then you get the advanced steam weaponry, which is a play on the all-out weapons from... ZC and Hendrix, but it is different because instead of breaking these items, you deplete them. So you basically run out of steam. So if you have steam, you can attack with it and you get these bonuses. And I notice here that some of these bonuses, and I haven't seen this yet in ZC, are actually to the two hit value, which is really cool. So you only need a two plus instead of a three plus. And then what happens is if you roll the die and you, you get this kind of depleted steam side then you can no longer use the weapon until you fill it again and we'll get into how you fill it as we go along here then you've got inventions unique equipment giving additional buffs armor rolls additional skills etc and this amazing equipment does not take up a slot in the inventory I talked about this earlier. I think this is a really cool idea. I don't love the idea of only using the player board for part of my gear, but you know, I'm fine with it. It's really, it's not a big deal. It's just kind of aesthetic. And there is some functional use to those player boards in terms of being able, especially if you're like me and you're shifting games in and out because you're trying to, you know, like create content or just play multiple games at once. It is nice with these campaign games, be able to pick it up and move it you know, all of it. And so here you have to like kind of gather up these cards and throw them on the board and stuff, but very, very small issue. And then you got the new steam dice. We talked about that. Um, they just have this really cool custom steam depleted symbol, which is awesome. 
you get the new class. I'm not going to go too much into this. Uh, I'm So far, I haven't been convinced that there's a lot of value in the class system in this game, which is, you know, disappointing because I was really excited about it. But basically, engineers use enhanced stats when they're going full steam, and they can manage their steam power by transferring it from one weapon to another. So that is cool. Then you get the steam jet valves and the gauge. So this is interesting and it is markedly different from the kind of day night system that's in ZC. And this kind of differentiation where it's similar enough so that if you're familiar with ZC and the idea of having this dial that's kind of moving along as you progress, you're going to be able to get into this really easily. It's just not going to work the exact same way, which would be really boring, and which is the way that they're leaning with stuff like this. Born here. But kudos to them for coming up with something different. They have this idea that on these maps there are steam valves, and I don't know if I can really see them on here. There may be some kind of designation for them that I'm not seeing. But the idea is these, you can use these valves to, you can toggle these valves on to refill depleted steam weapons, or they can also be broken producing a steam jet. And then if you get hit by a steam jet, it does a wound and they block line of sight. So they can kind of block you, they can trap you essentially. And the way that the steam gauge works is it, it, it acts as a timer, basically. It counts up as you take turns, and if you take too long, you build up catastrophic pressure, the, you hit the limit on the gauge, and you lose the game as the whole grid blows, basically. So really cool idea. And you know, again, just a really great way to implement a very similar mechanic with similar components, but it is it's it is quite different than the day-night cycle for the most part, at least that I've played so far of it. It doesn't really function as a timer, it just adds an element of danger because it's nighttime. And then you get the steam abomination. You know, one thing I would just say about this is he doesn't really look very steam-like. He's got <laughs> a wrench. Okay, great, good job. And goggles on but beyond that it's not particularly steampunky i would have loved to see like a mechanized abomination or to have him kind of plated out with you know steam armor or something like that but the idea is that he's basically an engineer from the engineer class that got you know zombified and turned into this a-bomb it's an okay sculpt. It's a cool sculpt, I guess, but it just seems like a missed opportunity to not lean a little more into the steam element of it. And But you can see he does have some kind of gauntlet on or something like that. Mechanically, the way he works is he runs around breaking open these steam valves, basically. Yep. So, cool idea. And then you've got the survivors... I'm definitely not going to go into these because, you know, I don't want this video, video to be super long, but you've just got kind of cooler, more interesting sculpts here, I think, than maybe you had in the core set. That's kind of a cool sculpt. That's a pretty cool sculpt. Again, I like that she's kind of bending over and she's got these kind of mechanized legs. An exoskeleton. This guy's got a cool robotic arm. So some cool sculpts and I'm sure there are some cool abilities in here as well. I love the chainsaw guy. And so that's basically it. That is the second thing that I loved about this campaign. The second most awesome thing about Zombicide 2nd Edition is the Gears and Guns expansion. The most awesome thing about this expansion is just the theme in general. When I heard that they were doing a Wild West themed Zombicide game, I was just super excited. I think it's a great idea, it's a great fit, and I just 
love the Wild West as a setting, whether it's, you know, Deadwood or or it's the old Sergio Leone spaghetti westerns with starring Clint Eastwood. I just love I just love the Old West. And one of my favorite games, I've said this many times, is Shadows of Brimstone, which is also Old West themed. And it's just, in general, it's not a theme that's been particularly heavily mined, especially for this kind of game. You've been seeing more kind of West, Old West themed games as of late, but for a dungeon crawl kind of, you know, beer and pretzels, dice roller type game, there, there really haven't been too many of those brimstone is on the edge of that but is a little too mechanically involved to really be you know kind of the equal of zombicide in terms of hey let's just play zombicide like you gotta <laughs> you set out with the intention to play brimstone you schedule time get people over and you spend three hours doing it so but just the theme is just awesome you know Love the Old West, love all these awesome, you know, movie references. Again, I could have done with, like, half of as many of them. There's way too many survivors in this game. Nobody's ever going to use all these survivors. But I see what they were trying to do. They probably treat this as kind of a one-off, much like they did Invader. At least, as far as we know, there's... So far, there hasn't been anything new announced for Invader, and I'd be surprised if there was. There was the comic book campaign, but beyond that, it felt like a little bit of a one and done. And this does too. And and so I understand the desire to pack these pop culture and historically based survivors into the game. I just think maybe you just, you know, you have to show a little bit of restraint leave yourself something to do in a future exp campaign or add more other stuff as well you know i wouldn't but regardless it is it is super cool it's a super cool theme the, when they when they lean into the theme they really <laughs> kind of knock it out of the park the great trickster spirit is awesome. The Wendigo is an awesome abomination. I don't know that it has anything to do with the Old West. As far as I know, this was... Well, I suppose it was kind of a Native American. So, in that aspect, I guess it would fit. <laughs> the Cactus Queen is super cool and was something that the fans were asking for. I like that idea. And then the the zombies that are in the daily duels are pretty cool. Station master, the mariachi, you know, zombie gunslinger, teacher, stagecoach driver, lumberjack, snake oil salesman, love it, the horse head, and then a miner. Uh, those are very cool. The abominations are mostly misses for me. They're not themed for this game. I don't believe for a second that somebody sat down and said, I need to make a puss bag for zombicide undead or alive i believe that they had a reject sculpt from a previous campaign like black plague and said eh, it's generic enough that we could use it in our old west game same thing with the pretty much with the fat maze which is they <laughs> which became clear because they re-implemented it for the cactus queen the cactus queen is basically the fat maze kind of redone because people said hey this family doesn't make any goddamn sense. Make it look like the Old West. And they said, cool, what if we make it look like a cactus? Okay, that works. <laughs> Alpha Bane is kind of a wolf, so maybe that makes sense. Swamp Tongue, totally t stupid, pointless, no place in this game. Same thing with the Gore Geyser, the Death Grasp, the Rotten Claw. Mo you know, most of these. The Melting Pot, I... I obviously I understand like kind of the meta joke that they're trying to make about America being a melting pot. I don't know that the old west was as much of a melting pot, but unless you were, you know, kind of building the railroad and, or you know, in terms of wandering around and being a hero, I don't know that that that's thematically on point, but this is a really really cool miniature. And then the steampunk expansion is incredibly cool and a cool idea. And so that's it. 
those are my top three most awesome things about Zombicide, Undead, or Alive. So you can see, you know, it's a little bit of a of a mixed bag for me. I do like it. I backed it. I intend on buying everything for it. Essentially, if we look at the pledges, the pledge that I made was the full Steam pledge. But even that, I don't think comes with everything. And I and there is there's some stuff here that's useful for other games like Brimstone, such as the lone horse pack for example or even some of these dice might be cool for brimstone uh, i don't think i'll really lean into that and they have their own kind of custom dice for that game but still you know lots of cool stuff i wish that there were more than one type of walker i don't know why they've moved away from this idea of specialty walker sets that they featured so heavily in Black Plague because th this is the one of the best things about Zombicide is being able to build that threat deck and really mix it up. And I don't think that the daily unlocks are really a one-to-one -one replacement for this system because, you know, you typically only get one of them. So it's it adds some variation, but it's almost kind of worse because it, it may it, it's much more finicky to manage one special miniature than it is you know five or six uh, because then you when they spawn they're spawning as a big group and they're different looking so it's easy to identify them but still like the idea wish they do more of this and less of this i don't give two craps about paulo parente or having more survivors in a game jam-packed full of survivors that nobody's ever going to use so i'm still getting it because it's in the pledge but this going on ebay and then the dead stock abomination is probably you know if i were if i had four awesome things i would have included this but again I didn't specifically because I called this out as something that sucks about the campaign because these should have been in the core box. If if it were me, I would have put these four, just like they had four specialty A-bombs in, in the second edition box, I would have put these four abominations in that box. Barring that, I would have put them in Running Wild and bumped the price up by $10. Having the four most thematic zombies in the game be... And a Kickstarter exclusive add-on is an abomination. See what I did there? <laughs> but ultimately, I still think that certainly you're going to get your money's worth. I mean, this stuff retains its value like virtually nothing else. And the theme is just so awesome. I'm interested to see more about how the train works and such and how that integrates with the theme. And I'm super excited about the campaign element of the game. So that's it. That Those are my top three most awesome things about Zombicide Undead or Alive. Please do let me know in the comments what your favorite things about the campaign were. Uh, there, I got a lot of comments on the previous video. And it's just really fun interacting and sharing ideas and thoughts and stuff. I learned stuff or look at things in a different perspective from a different perspective in those through those comments and so keep it up you know it's this is a fun ride we're on with this channel so hopefully we'll keep keep growing and keep going <laughs> all right i will talk to you all later